Hi, this is Ed Cohen in San Diego. Our talk show today is about to begin. Very, very special guests. And just honored and delighted to have this group with us. Diane Divitt is a professional media trainer. She's a professor, adjunct professor at uh, NYU. She's gonna talk more about that in just a second. And she has been a producer of major events uh, over the years. And I'm really honored to have Diane Divitt with us. And I wanna also introduce Lori Murphy, who's coming to us from London. And Konstantin von Mietnoff Schiel is in Brussels. And in the background, we have Sandra, and there'll be a few others joining us. Let's say hello and warm welcome to you, Diane. Welcome. Thank you, Ed. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, thank you so much for your time and your kind interest today. So where in New York are you today? Well, actually, today I'm in New Jersey, um, yeah. but I am, a, I am a, um, an original from New York. I, I live just right outside of Manhattan. Um, let's just say I'm in New Jersey, but my heart is in New York. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. So, Diane, you've written a book and you've been involved in major events, uh, heavy-duty media events. And, uh, you know, just so you know, uh, I used to produce uh, corporate training events uh, and would love to again someday. Uh, for instance, January 1 this year through February 27, I was fortunate to produce live events in New York and Washington and Seattle and San Francisco and San Jose and LA, and all of them have now gone away. <laughs> so I've been reinventing myself into doing TV talk shows like this. And um, it's taken me uh, a few months to get used to doing this. And I'm now not looking at the screen. Um, I'm looking at this green dot. And right. So, uh, Very good. It, I'm proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of you for doing that. We've, yeah, all, so, we've all shifted. So I've, I've tied my hands down so I don't scratch my nose or pick my ears. And uh, I'm sure you're going to give us some media tips right now. So Diane, you've written something called What Color Is Your Meeting? What Color Is Your Event? Same thing. Uh, yes. Okay. So yes. I'm going to give you the floor now. Oh, well, thank you so much, Ed. So yes, I, I wrote, I actually wrote my book about five or six years ago, and but it actually has more credence now than, than ever before. It's a, um, it's a resource guide, and it's meant to provoke the reader into their own innovative and creative ideas with every page turn, um, because it's extremely visual, and that is where we are today, aren't we, Ed? That we're yeah, in a very visual world. Yeah. Yeah, being on camera. Um, so a very, very long time ago when I was a young man in Boston, one of my earlier jobs was, just so you know, uh, in the movie business. And uh, uh, yeah, I did some on camera, but mostly I was behind the scenes. I was just a kid. And I was hired because Woodstock was coming out and the, the ownership was old at the time and they didn't know what it was, you know? So they said, hey, Ed, go and take a look at the pre-screening and tell us if we should invest $100,000 and buy it for our theaters, right? And they wanted my kid impression. So I said, yes, of course. <laughs> and I said, uh, you know, beware because your theaters might smell from marijuana afterwards. But um, anyway, they bought the film at, for their theaters and it made millions. So I understand uh, what showbiz is all about, but it's been very, very many years uh, mm -hmm. since I was actively involved. And here we are, because this is really show business right now, isn't it? It's no question. You know, I, I have coined a phrase, the theater of events, the theater of meetings. And I just said to someone yesterday, now we have the theater of virtual events. Yeah, you know, face. we're we're kind of in this Wild West territory, aren't we? Yeah, face. And uh I'm, I've never combed my hair so tightly before, but. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, but that's a good tip, you know, when you, from media, because there's so many, there's so many aspects to it, aren't there, Ed? I mean, there's the production aspect, there's the personal on camera aspect for the, for the speaker. Um, and then there's the presentation skills that go with that type of event, if it calls for it. Yeah, yeah. So. Tell us about your background and, and give us a clue about some of these events that you were involved with as producer. 
So, um, so I've been involved in live events, experiential communication for 25 some odd years. Um, I do remember Woodstock. I wasn't allowed to go, but I do remember it <laughs> well, just so you know. Um, <clears throat> some of the more hallmark events that I've worked on, um, I worked on the Vietnam 50th commemorative anniversary welcoming the vets home was um, um, through Pre President Obama's era. I, um, I worked at the, in Baku in Azerbaijan on the, uh, what they called the first European games. It was the Olympics, brought together 50 heads of state um, up in the Baltics. It was actually about four, four years ago, unprecedented. And I, and I worked with some um, clients like MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology on, on their various anniversaries. Um, so it's been the gamut from corporate to to universities, to um, you know, to some social events. So, how did you handle the cross-cultural engagement? You know, a smile goes a long way, doesn't it, Ed? Um, yes. And and when you're, you know, as a producer and as someone responsible for this, I mean, my 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 words are, "Can you help me?" Mm. That's my words. Can you help me when yeah. you're producing something? You need th something all the time. And I think just respecting people, um, respecting their differences. And you talk about cross culture. So what foods do people eat? Um, do they understand each other from a language point of view? Um, you know, there's so many things to respect. And I think that's the secret sauce to anyone who is successful in this field is to respect the people you're working with. Yeah. So, but it's not necessarily a language thing because most everybody speaks English. Yes, they do. Yes, yeah. they do. Yes, they do. Um, but it is a is a protocol thing. So, you know, for example, in Baku, I, I very innocently ended up putting together a meeting with the um, the mayor of uh, Baku and the head of the um, the Olympics at the time and the U.S. ambassador. It was. That was, uh, you know, so so how do you do it? That follows rules of protocol that each country have to recognize. So it gets into a, it gets into a, a different territory than just saying hi, how you doing, you know. So what about yeah. preparation? Do people need makeup? Uh, uh, surely they need lighting, but um, but what about the backdrop and uh, right. visuals, right. things like that? Right. So we're so we're now in this whole new landscape, right? This whole new virtual space. And and um, to your point, yes, yes, and yes. So, do they need makeup? Yes, but I mean, you can see me as an example here. I don't have a lot of makeup on. Um, there's a. I learned a tip from from a makeup artist of how to just lighten up certain areas because the camera picks that up. And well, you're I can right. See your lighting is up from underneath, looking at you, at your that side of your face. The lighting is very important. And actually, this light is 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 to be replaced soon, because you want the lighting to be very um, full spectrum of your face. When you're on a screen, it's very important to not have a window behind you, because the ambient light actually reflects off the screen, your, your physical screen, and then that bounces off your face and it, it, it creates sort of a mirror image, huh? um, yeah. which is very distracting to people. Yeah, so like for instance, I'm gonna show you this. I'm gonna put on a top light. Good. So you see what that does up here? Exactly, so exactly, I, the next I, point, yes. So, so yeah. I always encourage people to have lights on their desk so and ideally- That's what I just did. But I've got a light over here, so you can see it's giving me some light. So too bright. No, so, too bright. Oh. Yes, exactly. So for the so the yeah. thing is, we have to be very cognizant of lights overhead um, and where the lights are located. You don't want to see them in the on the screen. Hmm? Right. The other so, thing. Um, so so uh, Constantine, you you have a white light on that desk. <laughs> Uh, well, actually, my lighting is absolutely not the scratcher of what it is all about. <laughs> I have a light above my head. Yeah, we see that. It's, it's an office kind of thing that shines down on me, yeah. which, is no, which means my face is possibly not really that visible because it has a lot of dark areas. No, we see you. Uh, but and that's that white light that's behind you. Basically. But, but yeah. 
I, I, I was thinking that I should actually put a lamp um, in such a way that it would shine uh, from further below towards my face. Yeah. Um, in preparation of our meeting here today, but then I didn't get around to do that. Well, this, yeah, but this is a nice, a real time example. Uh, yeah, like yeah. I've, got, I've got this light right over here. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, that's too much. Yeah. And you know yeah, what? And, and, and also, sometimes no light actually helps. If you're on a call at night, experiment with having, don't have any ambient light and just use the light from your screen. I mean, see, Ed, Ed is trying that now. Now, it's a little bit dark, but it's not impossible. Do you know, right. it, it, it depends. I can try and do that for one second, switching off the ceiling light. Hmm? But you see then that I'm too dark. Well, the, the yeah, thing that, is, the yeah, back yeah. ceiling light, right? The, the, the light it's behind you. It's too much. It's too much. Yeah, it's really bright. It's, it's like uh, the well, sun. I'll this one back on. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. And so that actually leads me to another point is one thing you don't want to do, and this is a theater tip, is distract distract people with, you know, everyone loves the bookshelves in the background. It, it's just kind of our standard thing. But you don't want to distract people either with what's in your background. And so, Constantine, for example, when that light was just on, it was blaring. And that would, that would actually yeah. lessen my ability to hear you because I would be focused so much on the distraction to see you. Um, see, let's see how this goes. Now that light is off. Well, it's yeah. much better. I think the sound is affected um, a little bit, right, Ed? Yeah, uh, you're garbled. Uh, there's something wrong with your mic, or maybe you should pull it closer. No, there's, there's something wrong with the mic, Constantine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's it's all garbled. Lori, how's your sound? Yeah, it's perfect, I think. Okay, good, good. Well, this is actually this is actually really good, Ed, that you planned this for people to see it and hear it happening because this yeah, is the time. world we live in. Well, it's the world we live in now is and and the good thing is we're in a progressive world. We're not in a perfect world. Uh, this is a new medium that we're all exploring, and yeah, so brand new brand new you know so when you when you ask me you know about uh prepping people and what does it take you know being a um, a good a producer or a moderator it starts beforehand you know with a check uh a tech so, check hmm? let me ask you about scripting uh mm -hmm. i personally like bullet points in prep but scripting is Boy, you're looking for a disaster, I think, unless you have one of these big teleprompters right above you. So um, when I produce my events, uh, you know, I've been doing them every two weeks at two and a half hours of content. I actually have a show flow that's to the minute. And there is actually an app uh, that there is a teleprompter app. So oh. I've, I'm very proud of myself that I've, I've then, you know, you, you actually, it's... Um, and it's actually called prompter and but there are others out on the market so you can type your you type your show flow in word you save it in a text format send it to dropbox and then upload it and so i use my ipad right in front of my screen as a teleprompter oh well, that's great. I'm notes. yeah yeah this so it's valuable Diane. Thank yes you. yeah it's very very helpful so when you're on the screen and to your point which was perfect you know i'm looking an inch below or about an inch and a half below the camera right now which i think is giving you the impression that i'm looking at you right absolutely it's perfect yeah. now yeah. Uh, i'm i'm when i just step back a little bit i can see everybody better than when i'm really up close looking at this silly green dot <laughs> yes but it's 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 it takes it definitely takes getting getting used to and being comfortable on the screen so when we do a pre-check with the speakers for these events, we do all of these things that you're brilliantly pointing out, but um, you know, it, it applies to everyone now. This is the thing, this is universal. Right, so now um, people are looking for jobs, you know, for sure, uh, even though they may not want to talk about it, uh, right. they certainly are. And companies are looking for people too. There's a vast, 
army of qualified people out there mm -hmm. who are in transition. Yes. So video interviewing is the way they're doing it, period. Yes, very much so. In fact, um, in fact, this is such a timely conversation because people, I, I just received two emails this morning from people to ask to, to help them. Um, just with this exact thing, they're doing a pitch to a client for a piece of business and uh, how do we set it up? How do we, how do we uh, stage it? How do we produce this in X amount of time that we have? So you're right, you're right on with that one. Diane, let me ask you once again, you said that uh, regarding your teleprompter system and mm -hmm. you're not looking at the camera, you're, you have it positioned so that you're looking at a screen. Right, right. So what I do is, so if you're sitting at your desk, you're sitting at your desk now and you're looking at your monitor, right? So I actually put a huge, um, you know, one of those dictionaries that you never look at anymore, I used to sit on, huh? Yeah. Um, so I, I have that. Um, on my on in front of my screen basically my screen is being blocked out so I, I I have to do a few production tricks and I'll put the the whatever it is the block or whatever rises put my iPad in front because I don't want to be like this you know exactly. I don't want to be like that when I'm introducing and then if you go into the at the upper right hand corner of your zoom camera and you click on it should say speaker view but if you click on that you can see how the uh the, the frame change the windows change like right now ed you're full screen to me well, you and, know what i've got you on my full screen right okay and then everyone else is in like a little media clip on top yeah. right yeah. well if you press that if you press that again, then we would all come out equal like a like a game board, right? I just, I just did that. Yeah. Right. So I play with that so that if someone is asking a question or I'm facilitating something that I can see the person's face. But it's more what I hear at that point than what I'm seeing. Yeah. Okay. Now, behind me, I've got a picture that I took of a small canal in Venice. I, I wish I were there right now. Yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's not distracting is it well it's it would it would be uh, more effective if it were uh to the left or the right of you because your face goes right in the center of it when you're speaking yeah. so again right again if it were to the left or the right and this is what you know this goes into like uh, some people are using backgrounds you have to be very careful with zoom backgrounds because you know we've all seen where the head goes out of the zoom camera and it, you suddenly look yeah. like some character from a movie um people are using branding they're using the, um i say choose your spot you know it can be distracting it, if you're in a serious business meeting and your background is palm trees and the caribbean or, or, or someplace exotic you're, you're just not going to be looking at that person Right. Not going to be doing it. I, 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 leave, I tell you this, I did a lot of work in sensory research a few years back and just working with our five top senses, it's like a super highway in our brain. And this is why the expression zoomed out is so popular now, because we're seeing people, we're hearing them, but we're not having that nonverbal sense of touch that we so desperately need to be empathetic to one another. Um, so, so there's a real, yeah, there's a real, um, dynamic from a psychology point of view with how to use the, the right background and when. Good. Thanks. Constantine, any points or questions you'd like to make? No, I mean, so far, this is all very, very clear. I was just uh, trying to interject. Um, I have been reading lately a little bit about um, this. Uh, well, when you, when you do this webinar kind of things, um, you have your Zoom camera kind of thing. Um, but what is promoted a lot is, is, is this uh, round kind of LED light kind of thing, so circle light, uh, because it gives a pretty even and, and balanced kind of um, light to your face. And you have to choose the softer light version i mean so so the level of lumen is uh, not too high uh because otherwise it emphasizes as you were saying then um maybe in terms of your makeup whatever yes. uh, 
any imperfections that, that might be there. Hmm? Or, well, Constantine, or... just so you know, if you were here, I would ask you to help me put it together because it just arrived yesterday. I've been waiting for a few weeks. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of it's sort of a light in a. It sort of looks like a a sphere. It it's a smaller sphere inside of a larger sphere. Right. 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 Yeah. 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 The problem is that so many have been um, demanding for such devices and things that at the moment um, it's very hard to get them even on the internet. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, the cameras and the lights and everything but yeah there will be a time in a while when these things become a bit more available and um, I'm sure that those, those small things actually help a lot uh, in terms of the preparation and the makeup for, for, for proper presentation. Constantine, let me jump in and ask you to go a little deeper about your special work. You've been involved with some very large uh, energy companies and some other manufacturers uh, and um, yeah dealing with people issues. Um, are, you, are you using video now? Uh, well, actually, um, in terms of my work, as, as Nuri was talking, um, and you gave us like three different stages of your, of your doings, <laughs> um, I kept it a bit more general, saying that we do this, um, well, um, health management in the workplace. But at that level, I have been involved in many different things. I mean, I used to do a lot of executive coaching, working with senior um, business leaders on, on particular issues, understanding corporate world, corporate life, and what intrigues and, uh, well, makes the C-level people um, tick on different issues. Uh, very important uh, point, um, and I think very helpful in what we are currently doing, um, and that is managing primarily just large level of demands of um, corporations wanting um, psychological support um, for significant numbers of employees that they have. Um, sure enough, under the given circumstance, uh, there is no face-to-face. -face. Um, all of what we are doing at the moment is, is, is based on using video channel um, and talking to people that way, interacting individually with, with, with clients, uh, patients, if you like, I mean, people who have, who have issues, uh, our, our psychologist teams that we have, um, interact with all of these, um, cases really, um, using video channel. That's the one and only, because you cannot physically visit anybody. Um, you know, if I may jump in, um, you, you deal a lot with people who are under mental stress for a variety of reasons. We have that a lot at this moment, yes, indeed. That's, that's a very, very big issue. And we have also an increase um, of, of demand coming from corporations, um, recognizing that the, the human dimension, if you like, of what people are going through, a lot of them working from home office, not having perfect situations there, obviously, to be able to function. Um, creating all sorts of challenges for people. Um, you were talking, your, Lori, about um, your, your child being in the room next. Hmm? Um, not always easy when you need to work on something and you have two of your infants crawling over your lap most of the time, <laughs> kind of thing. Um, very difficult to stay focused and concentrated. And that creates a lot of stress issues for people. Uh, people being confined for such an extended period of time and in some of the countries that we also deal with, people were actually not allowed even to go outside of their apartments for about two months. They could virtually not leave. You can imagine that that had some impact on the quality of the relationships um, and issues that would come from there. Uh, we are currently experiencing a, a significant increase of people um, calling with states of anxiety, um, obsessional kind of um, behavior patterns that they have. Um, and all of the counseling that we can do for such people has to be done using telephone and where possible also video channel. And, and a very simple one that we actually use occasionally is WhatsApp. Uh, because WhatsApp is quite quite straightforward there, hmm? and the two people talking with each other, if they both have it, um, they can click on the camera kind of function on their mobile phones, and that creates a clearly much enhanced environment um, compared to just a voice connection. Yeah. So, Lori, in your practice now, are you dealing with expats who are stuck somewhere? Sorry, yeah, was that question for me? 
Yeah, Lori, how are you doing? Sorry, yeah, my apologies, yeah. And yeah. I'll go back on mute if I have to because, I, yeah, I heard the question. I'm dealing with some background noise. Yeah, typically what I've done is I've flipped everything over to Zoom. And if I can give an example, last week I was coaching a British national who works for an American telecommunications company who was due to go to Mexico for an international assignment. And what he has done now is stepped in to the role virtually, and I was working through some of the issues um, that he was having with his team, stakeholders, etc. So I'm doing it virtually, and he's actually doing the role virtually until he hopes to go to Mexico, probably August, September. Yeah, interesting. So Diane, um, what are one, two, three tips that in general we can uh, drive into right now. From a from being on screen point of yeah. view for everybody. Yeah, well, preparation and then while on screen, maybe for sure, don't scratch your head or pick your nose. Yeah, well, well, yes. So number one is just realize that you are on the screen as much as the host and the speaker, and that everyone has their eyes on you. There's a there's something that came up this week where we were on a call and someone received a call and she muted herself, but she had the call the whole time. So that's just a total no, no. It's just the new rude. Um, yeah. It's, but we're not even, it just goes to show how anesthetized we were becoming with the screen and not the human connection that we think that you don't see me, you know, it's like that you don't see me. Um, yeah. So I think that just, you're right. Being aware, don't, eat you know drinking is fine we sip the water our tea whatever but but be careful not to eat be careful to mute yourself be careful to do your stop video if you are going to leave or you are you do have something to do realize that every movement is captured on screen your lighting your your sound um all of these production elements have in in pl a place and credence when you have a when you have a professional meeting this is a conversation we're growing, we're learning, but when it's a professional uh, situation, you want to make sure you prepare for it the best way you can, given the circumstances we are all living in right now. Yeah, thank you very much. And so let's talk about the different kinds of events. Like you just said, this is conversational, it's perfect. But let's just say that uh, we're doing a job interview and, and you're the hiring manager. So what are you looking at knowing that this is kind of a stressful situation. Um, I'll answer that in a second. Can I just add one more thing to the other question? Yeah, is is be, be careful what you wear um, and, and look at anchors, look at television anchors, how they dress um, and the women especially, no bold prints, no bright reds. You know, a bright red would, would, would tell you I was yelling at you. So be careful of what you wear, be careful of jewelry, be careful of distractions. I say that. Um, for anybody okay um so uh events i'm sorry so just you can you just help me that again so with the events yeah. let, let, let's do some role playing uh, mm -hmm. so you're the hiring manager and i'm looking for a job okay so, um knowing that this is a stressful situation uh and you're asking me about well what happened to my last job or did i like my boss or something stupid like that um so what are you looking for when uh when so so uh, we're role playing now and i'm i'm interviewing right. you uh, yeah. what makes you feel the most uncomfortable ed not being prepared that's right okay so that's a good answer so how did you prepare for this interview today what did you learn that you didn't know beforehand i have been reading your linkedin stuff uh, <laughs> a little bit every day and i and i wrapped up uh about my 8 a.m. your 11 a.m. about 30 minutes before showtime and and I, I i learned not to write things down because then i have to go find them and look <laughs> and so, okay so i memorize this stuff and so i'm trying not to stutter well it's actually okay to write things down and that's and again let's go back to broadcast because this space is all about you know it's okay to say hey i have a couple of questions um, let me ask, because just, just we have chat, don't we? We have the chat function of people asking right. us questions. So it's very acceptable to do that. Um, 
So what, um, what, what would you like to achieve the most in the position you're, you're interviewing for? Well, thank you. I'd like to be recognized for whatever I can contribute. I do want to learn. I recognize that I have a deficiency in what you're looking for, uh, but I bring a lot of talent and exposure to a, a lot of different people, cross-border, cross-time zone, cross-culture. I think you're just perfect for the job. <laughs> okay. Constantine, right. Constantine, please hire me, too. <laughs> <laughs> I can't compete with Constantine. <laughs> <laughs> You're muted right now, so yes. Okay, got off of that. Yeah, no, no, you, you're our international ad, so um, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, Laurie, what are you looking for in an employee? Yeah, I suppose attitude. It has to be attitude above all else. I was looking at a video uh, from Harvard Business School last night, and it was about Shackleton and the journey to the Antarctica back in um, early 20th century. And the one thing above all that he was looking for in the crew that he was recruiting for this uh, expedition was attitude above all else. Not technical expertise, attitude. And it's something prior to that, but it just reinforced for me the importance, especially in the world we're living in now. Good point, good point. Constantine, the mental stability, how do, you, how do you see through when people are faking it? Well, that's a difficult one. <laughs> um, sometimes by asking, uh, well, questions, obviously, uh, that you can level um, and can see, well, that, that they are not honest. Uh, people are not, not really giving the, 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 the straightforward kind of story taking things, um, whatever, uh, that's, that's, that's through the quality of your interviewing that you can come to, to discover such things. Mm -hmm. um, people who are good in simulating a particular condition, mm -hmm. um, that's not so easy always to discover. Mm -hmm. um, when they have learned their act well, mm -hmm. um, then um, it's not so easy. Uh, but um, I think in general, in the kind of work that we do, uh, well, people are not really trying to just fool us or, or, or fake something, whatever, in order to get to a particular stage. Um, the majority of people who call us, and that's a good piece of advice anyway, take the people for face value for who they are um, at the moment that they interact with you. Um, and don't, don't, don't think that uh, maybe there is something that you should put in doubt. Uh, but take them for what they are at the moment that you have them. Thank that's, you that's very much. That. Okay, Diane, let's go back to the color idea. What color was your event? So what does that mean? It was an analogy uh, that I made regarding the, the personality, the message, the mission. You know, just as, as Constantine was just alluding to people now, we live in such an authentic time. Um, if, if I'm not speaking to you from my heart right now, you're going to pick it up in a second. Um, right. We we know, right? I mean, we just know. You know in a second if someone's being real. Uh, the best, one of the best things that happened this week and one of the, in the event that we were producing is that people asked one of the speakers a couple of questions and she didn't know the answer. Do you know that we got the most chat response from that? Because they said, thank you for just saying you didn't know, but that, you, you know, what, what is the standard answer? Gee, I really can't answer that because it was something about an opening of a space in Germany. But let me find out or I'll keep you posted. Each district, each region is, this, is different. You know, we're all going through such a day-by-day -day journey. Um, so, yes, so I, I think that's the biggest, that's one of the biggest things I've, I've noticed. But the color, you know, we need color. Um, I, I use the yellow, it, it's very um, positive. You know, when you stare at something yellow, it actually uplifts you. Um, in, another, in another part of my life, I'm a, a certified prana yoga teacher. And when you study yoga, you learn how different areas in your body are, are associated and connected with different colors. And actually in the event, we, one of the events too, is we had a chef speak about the color of food and how it can affect your comfort right now. So red, orange, and yellow foods are very comforting right now because they're grounding us. So when I spoke about color, it was an analogy in a lot of different ways. So what about like I'm wearing black? It's like 
my uniform. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to wear a tie in my house, so I, I don't do that. But listen, black. listen. I'm a New Yorker, and you know, half of your closet is black. The other half is for when you visit other places. Um, it's just a standard uniform, isn't it? But you know, they say on screen. And, I, and I'm as guilty. I, I would deliberately wore this bright color today, but uh, they, they say not to wear black um, because of the way the camera, they wear, wear a dark blue, wear, wear, wear a blue that comes across on the screen like um, Constantine has the blue on. It's a, it's a softer, it's, it's a softer yeah. color. And so colors really do resonate. Red yells at you, um, a bright colors yell at the screen. So you want to wear more muted. Um, colors. Does that help? Yeah. 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 The blue. So like, for instance, the, uh, the wall behind me is um, Tuscan red, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, when we were in Italy, we saw all these colors and we took pictures and we said, okay, let's paint the walls, you know. With these that, that red works great though, Ed, because that's a, that's a combination, that's a brownish red and brown is a very grounding color. So it's, it, 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 what the screen picks up and this is the world we live in now. And this is where training across the board is so important in, in so many different ways is what is the message? If you have an employee in your company going out to speak in front of your customers, what is the impression that that employee is going to make? I never I'm, I'm, I'm talking when we get to that business pitch, not, not a conversation, right? Yeah. Oh, I, I never thought of that, you know, the appearance, the colors. Um, yeah, interesting. Yeah, I mean, like, even for, like, you see the screen behind me? I mean, this is just a regular portable Soji screen, right? But I deliberately turned it backwards because the, having the wood was too much. And that's a very, again, that's a very theatrical uh, design secret is be careful of the size of things. In the, in the space that I'm in on your screen right now, those little small squares work. Yeah. Without yeah, well, being you distracting. You really can't see them. Yeah. Can't really see them without yeah, being distracting. Flowers are visible. Those flowers are, are good. Yeah. 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 That's that's in case you don't want to look at me anymore. You look at the flowers, right? <laughs> one of the things that I find, though, one of the do, one of the things I will say, and and regardless of of uh, not regardless, but with respect to the topic and how serious it is, that we all need to laugh. You know, yeah. we, we can still, and so when you're online, like wh what I do, what I've been doing now is like, I have this ball, you know, I'll juggle the ball. And I learned from one of my friends whose name is Jen Slaw. She's a professional juggler and speaker. You know, she just plays with these. So she tells people, if you can't have a ball, juggle a sock. But so when you're sitting at your desk for hours on end, what are the sensory things that you're going to do for you that keep you healthy? Like my bag of tricks and I share this with you. I have a, I have a scented candle. I, I have my, you know, my water spray to keep my face awake. Um, I have my essential oils. I have all kinds of things going on that you don't see. And most of all, what I have on top of my desk, a picture of people who I love and I have fun with. So when I'm looking at them, um, if you can't see the screen, you're looking at people who, yeah. who support you. So that's kind of a little production secret. Yeah, well, that's really cool. Wow, this is, <laughs> this is so educational. Uh, we want to have you come back someday and do more. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so what do you see now, um, without getting into politics at all, <laughs> but, the, but the optics that we have been watching on TV, ad nauseum the past a month um this call call it what it is you know uh, the the way that um the newscasters are reporting and the street scenes and president in washington and then the crowds uh, i mean you know the visuals are like numbing they're numbing and I will tell you that I don't watch them. I chose, yeah. I chose not to, to watch the news. And I think that now that doesn't mean that I'm not up to date on things. My, I watch BBC if I want to catch up with what I find intelligent news. Uh, to watch that over and over again is so bad for the human psyche. 
Yeah. But we have to remember this. I go back to 9-11, Ed. Um, yeah. Being a New Yorker, we all had our stories. I have my story to tell. And the week we went back and convened, I was in a room. There was all the leading media there, the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, New York Post, all the leading media were in the room. And, we, and then a TV, you know, broadcast as well. We said, why are you showing that same clip? And you all know it. Everyone knows listening to it, that same clip over and over again. When we know people who were in that building, why are you doing that? Well, because people are addicted and they get glued to it. And it's yellow. It's the same old adage, yellow journalism. And someone in the audience said, just shut it off. And I'll never forget that. Just don't watch it. Choose not to watch it. We get more pop-ups on our devices in the morning. We have more news. We have over, what is the st stat? You can probably help me, but it's over eight, like 200,000 ads, 200,000 things in our pop-ups in our brain a day that we didn't ask for. Yeah. It's yeah, probably it's, higher now that we're online. So, right. right. Yeah. Constantine, what about the mental aspects of that? It's obvious that it's not good, but... Just you know, picking up on this particular issue of uh, the influx of, of news, hmm? um, one of the key recommendations that we have had for people in this um, early days of the uh, COVID-19 uh, was to reduce the level of information that you would get to a two to three times in a day maximum short update from a reliable resource. I mean, you mentioned the BBC. Uh, or whatever. I mean, some 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 resource that you can really sort of consider to be credible and, and and neutral up to a point, and giving giving you just just sound information sort of thing uh, with not too much bias and whatever. And even if three times in a day is too much, then then have it just one time in a day and no more, uh, because this over flooded uh, kind of aspect of of of, of getting all these things constantly. Uh, makes people extremely nervous um, and agitated um, and, and, and gets them to become quite tricky sometimes because they, 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 they can no longer really tell apart things and whatever. And this overflow of stuff is, is, is absolutely not conducive. Yeah. Yeah. Maury, do you want to say something to, to add to this as we come to a close? No, because I've got a lot of background noise in my little boy, so go ahead. <laughs> Oh, it's okay. It makes us very human. No, I just, I suppose what I would say is just fascinated listening to everybody, but obviously Diane as, um, as a subject matter expert, just in terms of the tips, the do's and don'ts. And I mean, if I'd have heard this before I came today, I'd have changed some things. So what I will do is ensure that I kind of take the lessons from today going forward because and um, certainly for me, I don't see myself in a training room or on site um, until 2021 and less frequently because everything now will be pushed online. So I just want to thank you for inviting me and kudos to everybody who, um, who put the show on the road. Well, it's all because of Diane. Oh. <laughs> I don't know about that. I do have something, and, and, and Constantine, I, this is something just to think about. It just came across my mind, but because I was pondering this from an HR point of view of what companies could do to, to all your points with the anxiety, and we're just coming in, what, phase one in New York right now? So mm -hmm. I wonder if there can be something that can be put out on a daily, on a daily level that's a crossword puzzle or the old comics that we used to have or, or the juggling, how to juggle or how to knit. You know, people have been cooking more than ever and we've been going to, to um, grounded, a grounded place of fixing up our homes. I mean, I'm, I'm the best cleaner in the world now. Um, but I just wonder if companies can do that just to help people uh, have a little levity while we go through this. Well, I just want to jump in that in addition to cooking more, we're eating more. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah it's a matter of finding the right level of balance, indeed. I mean, a lot of people have been complaining that they cannot go to their gyms and different kinds of things that they used to do. Um, so, I mean, this um, home 
training and doing doing video classes, uh, yoga or 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 whatever, um, has become very very popular. Um, I can just say about myself, um, um, I became an avid bike rider uh, because where I am in Vienna, we were allowed to still go out and ride the bike. And I, at least three times in a week, I would go out for, for, for an hour and a half intensive, really riding, riding the bike in a hard way. And that not only physically felt good, but um, it was the mental aspect of having done something really for yourself. Um, really having engaged. But to your idea, I think uh, what you're saying about the corporate world, bringing in something that has an element of humor, hmm, um, creates a sense of connectedness for people, um, is, is great. Hmm? And that's that's very much also what we try to advise um, organizations um, to do in terms of what they bring out to the people. Well, what I've been doing with Joanne is we go out for walks. We go to the beach. Uh, the beach is a mile from here or so. And uh, we did that yesterday and the day before, and we're going over the Coronado Bridge in a little bit. Ah. We're going to walk around there. And then this afternoon, I'll be back here at the computer planning the next stuff. And incidentally, tomorrow on this show uh, at 9 a.m. Pacific, uh, I'm interviewing Scott Gillespie, who is an expert in business travel consulting. And the topic is getting back to business travel, what do employees expect of uh, employers and what do employers expect of the travelers and all the safety and trust issues. So it's mm -hmm. really going to be a fascinating show to add to this conversation today. So I really thank you for adding to the education for Global TV, Diane. I welcome you back anytime. Thank you, Ed. Thank you.